Salud. I'm sorry, we Omegas. Yeah, I was trying not to do that on the praise the Lord. <laughs> Rick, how you been, man? Man, I've been good, man. Uh, man, this, uh, go ahead. It, Cause I, I'm 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 nervous because uh, you know you of course everybody know I talk about you on my show they tell me not to yeah you talk about me on your show and they tell me not because you know we're on competitive right. uh, markets in a lot of like Dallas Atlanta we own in a few cities at the same time right and you're not supposed to discuss your competitor in the radio world but Ricky and I's friendship supersedes all of that we don't right. care yeah. Yeah. And uh, this brother comes to my, if, if somebody's saying something bad about me that's not true, this brother gets on his microphone, yeah. and on his Twitter, whatever See, I'm, got. That, I'm, that other, I'm that first person you was talking about earlier. I hadn't got there yet, so <laughs> when somebody attack you, I go in for you, where you won't have to do it, so I kind of help the Lord. <laughs> oh, you help the Lord, that's <laughs> See, this, this, this is the problem I'm having. Um, Rick. A lot of people don't know this. Um, I met you in like 87, 88. Like 89. It was 89. 80. Um, <laughs> 80, yeah. 80, 87, 86. Yeah. <laughs> 87, 85, somewhere. It's Steve, you got to do what he said. <laughs> I'm sitting there, I'm looking at you, I'm tripping, I'm going, you heard what I said? Yeah. <laughs> right. You know what you all, we have this TV show right. on all over the world. Right. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> well, whatever year it was, you had just come out of some pretty traumatic stuff. Oh, yeah, I was, uh, I was a gunshot, a lot of people don't know, I was a gunshot victim. I was uh, almost murdered. Uh, uh, passing out flyers from a uh, my little comedy club I had in Birmingham and uh, I was at a uh, payphone, a guy was at a payphone, I was giving him a flyer and some guys were coming out to rob him and uh, they shot me uh, to let him know that they were serious. Uh, from... <laughs> yeah, they, they, y'all, y'all supposed to be Christians, y'all laughing at me getting shot. <laughs> Hey, Rick, you think I'm playing pow? Right, right, that's what, that's, and that's exactly what happened. Like, hey, give me the money, say, say, pow. Just point blank range with a sawed off 12 gauge. And, uh, yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> and uh, I, grab, I grab my side, and uh, it, it, it's crazy because, man, when you get shot and you don't, you know, you, pre you try to, you run to live, but you prepare to die. So you're saying, the 23rd Psalm in, in the Lord's Prayer while running. Because I don't want to lay there and get shot again. So I almost got hit by a car running. And I ran down the alley and ran on this lady front porch and the lady came to the door so told me to get off her porch before she called the police. <laughs> it happened. It happened. She said, get off my porch before I called the police. I said, I've been shot. She said, get off the, my porch. I the <laughs> so I went out, uh, th you know, I, I went out uh, past the front yard and, and collapsed in the middle of the street and I just screamed somebody help me. And uh, two guys were sitting on the porch and uh, drinking some beer. And they came and uh, one happened to be a nurse and applied pressure and somebody dialed 911 and I was in the hospital. I was in surgery for like uh, six hours. And uh, I was in intensive care for a week and stayed in the hospital a couple of weeks after that. And, uh, and 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 I, I I didn't understand when I got shot. I was like, Lord, you know, I, I'm a good person. You know, I, I play the piano for my Sunday school. You know, <laughs> play the organ for eleven o'clock service. Musicians don't get shot like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give a Kirk Franklin style testimony, y'all laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that's what. Because you know what it is, Rick. See, when you when you're born with this gift, man, what people don't know about it is, it's it's innate. You know, you can't help it. It's it's the way you phrase stuff. It's right. the way you say it. Right. People, people. No, I'm, I'm okay. You know, no, that, that's. I'm, I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to help them understand. <laughs> 
I know you know. Right. I, I just went, and what y'all dealing with is that part of it right there. And But Rick, man, uh, was one of them guys who came into the comedy club business and came into the comedy business and he, he didn't know how to dress. He had a jogging suit on. Yeah. You know? Come out to the Steve. Okay. This, this yeah, is my yeah. favorite story to tell. So I'm opening up with Steve. Steve was 30. I'm like 19. Steve was t kind of tall, skinny, had a high box spade and had on uh, a shirt with some polka dots on like, I guess Kwame was hot at the time. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was not. I was nice, hey, stupid. Hey, no, I was but nice. <laughs> but Steve, right, you got the outfit from Oak Tree. Yeah, I was nice. Oak Tree? Yeah. Remember Oak Tree? Yeah. Oak Tree back in the day. And uh, so I, have, I had a brand new Nike jogging suit on, so I thought I was sharp. So he, you know, Steve like, hey, hey, uh, you on the show with Steve Harvey. <laughs> He said, you know, he's like, he's like, so you got to go home and change. He said, he, he said, you need to change because when people pay money to come see you perform, you need to, uh, you know, dress accordingly. So he said, but I'm going to let you go ahead and introduce. So I was like, your headliner, uh, you know, give it up to Steve Hart. It was clever. So by the time Steve did his routine, I jumped in my 79 Cutlass two-door and drove all the way home changed clothes and put on the suit and by the time he said thank y'all i'm steve harvey i went back on stage and said give it up for steve harvey he said that's what i'm talking about but my favorite steve harvey moment was when i opened up for the kings and uh i was doing a little local radio in birmingham a uh, radio show in birmingham and steve uh came he said you know what man on the air in front of my peers he said i'm gonna put you on the show and uh, i was excited so i drove to atlanta picked up my son and drove all the way back to birmingham and uh and when I got through performing, you did some of the, you did something, it was almost like you anointed me in the comedy game. Because when I introduced you in front of my people, Birmingham, Alabama, you brought me back out on stage. He said, ladies and gentlemen, he said, I want to tell y'all something. Y'all need to be proud of this young man because this is the next one. He said, and, and it, it meant so much to me. I went backstage, I never told you this. I went backstage and I, and I, just, I just cried. Because nobody has ever did nothing like that for me in front of my peers. Because at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to be buried in Birmingham. My school teachers was in Birmingham. My grandmama, my granddaddy, everybody. Birmingham, Alabama, that's where I'm from. And you did it. You made people at home respect me. Wow. You know, and because, you know. And, uh, and it's funny because, you know, you, you know, you took me on the road and I had to ride in the limousine with you because I opened up for the king. So that means I had you was, you were hosting the show. So I had to go first. So I had to run and jump in. I would always be nervous when you come to the limousine. I tried to stay out your way. I try not to bother you. I'm just thankful. I, and you say, hey, man, stop saying thank you so much. <laughs> so so I, so I would get in the limousine and I would scoot all the way up by the driver. And I was sitting up there by myself, and I was sitting up there like, and I see you and your bodyguard, Boomerang, coming to the limousine. I'm like, oh, Jesus, here he come. I just hope, I just hope I'm dressed right. I hope I don't do nothing wrong. So, so Steve kind of get in the limousine and kind of give you like, so Ricky smiling. You ready? You ready? I'm like, yes, sir, I'm ready. I just wanted to, hey, stop thanking me every five minutes. <laughs> yeah. So, so when I got, when I got the radio show, man, man, I, I just, Man, I, I really thank you, bro. You know, you know, because I got the radio show and both of my grandmothers had passed. And I'm stuck in Birmingham and I was raised by, by, by my, all of my grandparents, you know. And uh, you called me, you said, hey, man, uh, you know, I'm getting ready to, you know, uh, to go to the next level in radio. I got an opportunity for you here in Dallas. I said, no, Steve, I can't do that. I just bought a house. He said, yeah, but how are you going to pay for it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I got, a, I had to get on the plane and fly to Dallas the very next day. And I ended up staying in Dallas. I came back to Birmingham, went back to Birmingham to get some clothes and drove back to Dallas with half of my stuff and did radio, uh, in Dallas, you know, and just the opportunities that you provided. And I just tried to be a good student and do everything you told me to do, everything you asked me to do. You don't even remember when you were 30 years old, you took about 
five comedians back to the hotel room and set us on the bed and stood up in front of the TV and lectured us about the proper way to do stand-up comedy. And I sat there and I had that little notepad and that pen and everything you said, man, I, I, wrote, I wrote it down. Because I had never seen nobody go on. I did. I never, I never seen anybody, you know, and, 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 and the thing about it is you have to be teachable, you have to be coachable, and you have to listen. Because if I want to get to where you are and you've been down that road, you know, I have to, you know, kind of take your advice and do what you asked me to do and just try to be a good student and just try to, because you was giving us guidance and you didn't have to do it. A lot of comedians will come to town, they, want, they don't talk to the amateur comedians and, and all this stuff. Man, you told me to cut my dress, and I did. You said, hey, man, uh, <laughs> cut your dress. I had dress down here. When I cut my dress, I started getting endorsements. Wow. You know, <laughs> so, so I, I, just, I, just, I just thank you, man. I, I thank God, you know, and, and, and thank you for the opportunity that you have given so many, Monique and Cedric the Entertainer, and so many people you put on. And people have to understand that nobody on this earth have to do anything for you and at, and at the end of the day mm -hmm. that's right and at the end of the day the phrase is thank you you know I, I i never had any expectations on you you know sometimes you'll just call out of the blue and say hey man what's up and it just make me feel good when you call but i don't expect you to call i know you're busy i'm busy too but man just any little time i get with you man it means everything to me you know and to be to be sitting right here, right now, and I'm thinking all the way back when I saw you get off that hotel shuttle to come into the comedy club, perform, and I shook your hand, and when you went on stage, I'll never forget it, you went on stage to Frankie Beverly and Maze, and I never see, seen black, because I was only performing. Remember, we started, our audience was white. There were no black yeah. people in the comedy club. We was performing in front of, uh, the majority of our audience uh, were, were white people. So that was before Deaf Comedy Jam and Apollo came out. But you was the first one to bring out the black people. And I never seen a comedian go on stage to Frank and Beverly and Mays. I was sitting up there 19 years old. I was so amazed by the magic you was, make, uh, you was making on stage. And I was like, man, right there. And that's, that, that day right there, that night, that's when I saw the light. It was almost like, <laughs> like my life changed. Yeah. And, uh, and I just want to say thank you, man. I really appreciate everything you have ever done for me. Really. Amen. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I didn't, and then I, I play SQ after you play it. Yeah, <laughs> Every, yeah. Everything you try to do. <laughs> you know, man, it's been a, um, you know, I, first of all, I didn't, I didn't know what you were going to say. I just knew I wanted you here because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not fronting, you know what I'm saying? This, this is a first for me, you know, and, and, and people like you, man, that have meant stuff to me. See, my mother raised me with, a, because my mama was saved, see. My, my mama was a Sunday school teacher for 40 years. She always told me, she said, son, God blesses you to become a blessing. That's right. You can't, you can't get, you can't get nothing if you don't give nothing. You can't have this knowledge. If, what is knowledge if you don't share it? That's right. What is to come up if you don't help nobody up? That's right. Don't nobody care nothing about you being on top of the wall if you don't never stick your hand over the wall to help nobody up the wall. Right. Nobody, nobody will ever care. No one will ever care about your journey, man, in life if you don't do something for somebody, right. man. And you've turned out to be the type of brother where you, you do it back. And people don't know, man, this, this cat is a Christian. This cat is, he loves God. He in the, he in the same struggle I'm in. And, 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 and what I hope to accomplish by doing shows like this and, and, and really Miss Jane giving me this opportunity, man, is to show the world People like us, who you may not know, has a, has a love for God and a, and a, and a, and a need for him. Because, man, if you get in this business, you can't make it without God. Oh, you can't. Oh, and, 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 just, and, just, and just like you, Steve, you know, I do my first 15 minutes of my morning show. I do praise and then I do, I go back. Before, the, uh, before people go to work and do a whole nother praise break again. And I, I, do, I put God first and everything. God is, God is so awesome. Yeah, man. He's, yeah. he's, he's so, so, worth, so worthy to be praised, you know. 
And I, I, I thank him for everything. I thank him for everything. I grew up in the projects. You know, I remember sitting on the front porch not having anything. And God is just so awesome. He made a way out of nowhere. He's been a doctor in a sick room. He's been a lawyer in a courtroom. And like you, I've been, I've had people to try to sue me too and take me to court. Somebody went down there and got a lawsuit for like $900,000 and I didn't have to do nothing. I just sat back and God just worked it all out. Yeah. Didn't have to pay a dime. You know, and but you know, man, it's because you take the time out to honor him. See, I got we work in a secular world. Yeah. We play secular music. Please understand, that's the drill. That's your check. That's it. Feel how you want to feel about it. I'm, 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 that's my check. That's what is check. But in the very beginning, before we start, because they fought us. Oh, you yeah, know the fight did. we had they to did. play a gospel song they on did. a secular station. You have no idea the war you are going to be in. Yeah. But I told them plain and clear, you want me? Here come this gospel song. Wow. Because I told God, if you let me make it, I will tell everybody how I got there every chance I get. And it's, it's, it's because of him that you and I are on the radio, right. that you and I tell jokes. But we have a sense that about God, and we're just trying to share it with Doing people. It, I'm talking about first off the top. Man, you, I don't, they, they fought me, too, because I called you on the phone. He said, hey, I told him, I said, if I can't do my gospel, then you don't have me. You know, so I, I just kind of... Oh, the, the owners called me. Oh, yeah. And said, we're having a problem with Ricky Smile. I said, well, you had the problem with me. So, I mean, you know what you want me to tell you, but it is that fight that we've won. Right. And, and, and what we do is we touch an audience member that may not even go to church. Right. So I'm just outside the box guy. My walk with God ain't finna be like your walk. And I'm cool with that. I, I, ain't, I ain't got no building. You know, I don't own no walls or nothing like this. I got a microphone. Right. And I tell people about God every chance I get. And I make some mistakes throughout the four hours. But if you were to talk four hours live every day, somebody <laughs> would hear you say something crazy. But just, just take a mic and follow yourself around four hours. Some of that stuff come out you ain't going to want out there either. Well, right. it get out and it's all right. And then the next morning, I'm going to start over. I'm going to tell them about God. And when I can get a chance to play a Kirk Franklin song or, 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 or Mary Mary Jam or Donnie McClurkin or Marvin Sapp, I, never could have. I never Andrew. Man, I can't even. I, see, see, you go way back. You yeah, play I go more. way back. You now, be playing yeah. Albertina Walker. I do. <laughs> I do. Hey, Mahalia hey, Jackson. Hey, I, I remember, but, but see, I do. Uh, I do. See, 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 we do. We do. Yeah. We raised by old people. You know, I play Katie. I play Katie Sankey and Bishop Gilbert Earl Patterson. And, <laughs> hey. Hey. Yeah. Oh, my record. <laughs> we'll be there. Y'all don't know. Man, y'all. Hey, this, see, <laughs> my audience is a much deeper center. <laughs> I gotta keep, I gotta keep mine more current. I got Marvin, Donnie, Yolanda, Mary, Mary. Yeah, I got to stay okay. right there. But see, I play Albertine and Walker, then have to play Walker Flocker, no hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so I'm going back and then I'm coming way up. <laughs> see, 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 Ricky Station required that he play hip hop. Right. I'm a Del Contemporary. <laughs> I don't play it, you know. Uh, Shirley Caesar, Lil Wayne, you know. It's, it's hard. Yeah, that's it's hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, you need that. You, after you play Lil Wayne, you need hold my mute. <laughs> hey, y'all, show your love for Ricky Smile. <laughs> One more time, Kurt. Oh, no, 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 I can't. I got to keep my mind right, y'all. Y'all have me over there clowning. No, I can't clown with y'all. Ricky, uh -uh. come on. Ricky. Ricky. Come on, Ricky. You guys mind if we do some old songs? Can we do some old songs? Show some love for David and Tamala Mann, y'all. Y'all remember this? Y'all remember this? Silver and gold, silver and gold. Oh, Sing it with us, y'all. I'd rather have Jesus. 
and silver. Than silver and gold. No fame or fortune. No fame or fortune. No riches untold. I'd rather have shit. And right now we're going to have the church announcements. Than silver and gold. All children who are being baptized on Sunday. Please take a hot bath before you come down here. Because the baptismal pool had a ring around it last Sunday. I rather. <laughs> Pray for everybody on the sick and shut in list. Sister Mamie Johnson, she's on the sick and shut in list. She wore a candy necklace last Sunday by the snake. She fell asleep back there and got to sweating and the ants got a hold of her. <laughs> I'd rather have a I'd rather have cheese. Oh, Sing it with us, holy. Holy is the Lamb. Precious Lamb of God. The precious Lamb of God. Why you love me so? Why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know. The precious Lamb. Tell the man, y'all.
Oh, man. Thank you, brother. Kirk Franklin, everybody, one more time. Okay. All right, here's the tough part right here. Um, I'm the keynote speaker. Okay, now, okay, this is a little different for me, but, um, you know, I really wanted to know what I would even talk about because, I, and all I can do is tell you what I know. Because I have learned a couple of things about success. And I guess it's about prosperity, success, whatever you want to call success, whatever you, I have learned something about that. And I think that uh, God has prepared me for that moment, you know, to, to understand it and to share some of the principles with people. Because what I, what I learned, you know, from going to church a, a good part of my life is, is that there are a lot of people who know a lot of scriptures. They, they memorization of it is outstanding. And I can't tell you how I wish I had that. But if you don't have application of what you memorize, you can't really get what all God got for you. Now, feel how you feel about me. I have acquired some things in life because I knew some scriptures. And I just applied the ones I knew. My mama was a Sunday school teacher, so what she told me, I just applied to my life. I, didn't, I, didn't, I just knew St. Mark 11, 21, that, you know, something like, verily I say unto you, to whosoever so say, Unto that mountain be thou removed and shall believe in his heart and shall not doubt. Then it go on and on. Well, guess what? The part that I locked in on was if you believe in your heart and don't doubt. I locked that in. Well, guess what? If you're a Christian, you should have something to show for it. I'm sorry. I just don't see how God... If, if I'm his child, that I can't have nothing. I don't understand. Now, you ain't got to have what everybody else got. But you should have a life where you're comfortable. To me, you should. I, I don't know. Maybe you have a scripture to justify or can explain why you ain't got a comfortable life. But nowhere in there where it says you got to be pulled down, trodden, woe down, sick, tired, distraught, beat up, jagged, ragged have the least and the less you to you know I I have not if it's in there I have not located it and, and that's the one I ain't I, I'm gonna just if it's in there I'm gonna just let it be in there I like looking at the upside see if God is your father which he is mine and you claim him to be yours then you should benefit from that I have children who because of the lifestyle I've worked so hard to acquire, my children don't have to have the life that I had. You all want your children to have a better life than the one you had. How you figure God don't want you to have a better life? I mean, that's, that seems automatic. He your daddy, just like I'm my kid's daddy. You understand, my kids come to me, if they've been doing the things they're supposed to do, then I lay them out with it. If you go to God and you've been doing the things you're supposed to do, then he lay you out with it. That's just common sense to me. So what I'm talking to you about is just applying some of these principles that my mama taught me as a Sunday school teacher that then got me to learn a little bit about how to go from the bottom close to the top and how to get from the back somewhere close to the front. I ain't the best stand up in the world. I ain't the best radio person in the world, but I'm up there. You understand? See, you know, you may not like me, but seven and a half million people do. That's enough to have something to show for it. So what, what all, all my message is, is about some, some principles. Here, here's, here's something I learned from a guy. Uh, the two most important days of your life, the two most important days of your life is the day you were born and the day you discover why. Man, that's a cool, that's a cool moment, man. You understand? Do you know how valuable it is to be given the gift of life? But then the incredible gift when you figure out why. Because how many people you know can't get it figured out? 
If you are sitting there thinking it's got to be more to life than this, it's because it probably is. It's probably because God is whispering in your ear saying it's more to life than this. You ain't got to be tripping about it. It's just really more to life than this. But you got to figure out the why part. What helped me get to the why part? See, was the, you, the why part came to me when I discovered something that he gave to all of us. See, God gives everybody a gift. He never creates a soul without giving them a gift. You all are gifted. You don't have to be comedy. It don't have to be music, but you're gifted. You've all been given something. Some of you all, your friends come to you when, with their problems. That's a gift. Some of you know how to network. That's a gift. Some of you all connected dots at your church. Some of you all have organizational skills. Some of you all are better bakers than the other ones. Some of y'all are great florists. Some of you have argumentative skills. Should go be a lawyer. Something like that. Everybody got a gift. Some, some people is bald, some people is that. Everybody got one. I don't care if you see a blind person, they can do something. You see a person with a handicap, they can do something. You can do something. Problem is, though, you got to attach yourself to the gift. Now, how do you find out what that is? The day that you can get real with yourself and say, hey, look here, what is my gift? This is how you discover that. It is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. That's your gift. You ain't got the trip. You ain't got to ask nobody what you think it is. You can have this conversation with you. It is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. Them people over there that sing, they don't struggle to sing. It just come out. Michael Jordan don't struggle to play ball. He just play it. You understand? When you have a gift, it's what you do. You talk, that could be your gift. You write, that's your gift. You're a great listener, problem solver. You got the gift of matching up, that's all a gift. Hear what messes people up though. You see something that somebody else does and then you want to go do that. So now you're not concerned with your gift. Now you want to pursue a passion. You got a lot of problems happening in your life if you start chasing passion. So I'm in a passion chasing business. I used to go to restaurants in L.A. and every time I sit there, here comes some little fine girl. Every time I sit down, Mr. Harvey, can you look at my head shot and everything? I say, for what? What you do? I'm an actress. I say, so, so what you acting in? I'm, 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 not, I'm not in anything yet. I'm just, but I want to be. I said, no. What are you acting in? See, if you're an actress, then you act. Yes, yes. You a waitress. <laughs> Actors have acting gigs. Piano players play piano. Singers sing. So you ain't got to figure it out. If you ain't doing it, it's because you ain't it. This ain't. But if you are going to pursue a pa- I was passionate one time in my life about playing ball. I wanted to play in the NBA. Well, here's the problem. When I ran full speed with the basketball, I ain't have it no more. So now this, this passion about playing in the league, that's out the question now. I had to find out what my gift was. And when I really ran, ran back over my life, I was funny. I could take comedy and transpose it instantly. I, could, I wasn't afraid to come in front of people. That was my gift. When you start to pursue your gift, that leads you to what you should be about. And if you can become passionate about your gift, here where it get, there's a Bible verse. Uh, it's a proverb. I had them. Okay. <laughs> the first line says, a gift opens the way. If you figure that out, it opens the way. You can read all the rest of that if you want to, but your gift <laughs> opens the way. That's the part I saw. Cool. Then the gift opened the way. 
I got this lifestyle I got now because my gift opened the way, not my passion. I ain't made a dollar playing basketball. I'm passionate about golf. I shoot a 90 every time I play. You can't make a dollar playing golf. But my gift, though, has made a way. Why won't you find out from God why you were born by getting your gift and pursuing it? Stop chasing the passion. And come on, man, pursue the gift. You people been tripping yourself out for years chas chasing something that ain't yours. I want to lead the choir. You ain't the choir leader. <laughs> Really shouldn't even be in the choir. <laughs> now, once you discover what your gift is, and you go to God to help you prepare to make room for this gift, you got, you got to make preparation. See, now here's the other principle. You got to make preparation. You got to get ready. When I, when I first got uh, out of college, and let me see how I can put this to you. When I first flunked, flunked out of college. <laughs> I got a little job. I used to go to my mama's house all the time. I say, mama, mama. I just, well, it wasn't, I didn't have to go far. Just come on downstairs. <laughs> now I say, mama, I'm, um, check this out, mama. I'm gonna get myself a new car. My mama say, that's good, baby, but what you gonna do with your old car? Cause your old car out there up on, up on the blocks. I ain't paying no attention to it. A couple weeks later, I come back to her again. I said, mama, I'm gonna get me a car. She said, I know, baby, but what you gonna do about your old car? Cause it's out there up on the blocks. I would go out all the time to my mama talking about this car. Finally, man, I said, mama, how come every time I tell you I'm going to get a car, you say it's out there up on the blocks? <laughs> then my mama being a Sunday school teacher, she would just walk away. Because she would always leave me with the puzzle to solve. And I'm standing there and I figured it out. I said, wow. What my mama was saying to me was that if you're going to claim something, if you're going to ask God for something, you got to make ready for it. So, what I did was, I said, I'm, I called my partner up, called the tow truck, had him come pick up the uh, car, take it out. Then I started sweeping the garage, getting it all ready, got some asphalt cleaning. I cleaned up the garage because I was just getting ready yeah, yeah. to receive what I'd asked yeah. him for. Yeah. And when I got that car and got that garage all ready to receive, it wasn't 30 days later, it wasn't a new car but it was a new used car. But I had got it because then I had made ready to receive. If you don't do that, it's not an act of faith. A lot of us don't get what we want. We ain't making no preparation. Now, when I wrote this book, I wrote this book Called Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man. I got a new one out called Straight Talk, No Chaser. I write my books for women because it's all from the male perspective because you can't tell me nothing about manhood. I've been doing, I ain't never took a day off. This all I've been doing. <laughs> I done done just about everything in the book so I can put you on to what we think like. It ain't male bashing or nothing. It's just how men think. A lot of you ladies, you talking to God, about a man. You want a man. I want the right man. But you keep doing all this in the meantime stuff. So instead of waiting on the right one, you got these men in your life that's in the meantime. You know they ain't no good, so guess what they are? You see them blocks? You got something in your driveway sitting up on blocks. It don't work good. It don't do what it say it's supposed to do. You can't cut it on and get nothing out of it. It don't go to work. It's, it ain't worth a quarter, but you rather have that so you don't have nothing. But if you got rid of 
the old car up on blocks, make room, then guess what? Maybe you can sit on the couch. You can have a man coming in the door, going to work with a job, upstanding man, but you got to make ready for that. I just... All I'm doing is sharing with you principles of success, what I did to get over. Now, when you do that, you got to expect the haters to come because that's here they come now. See, you can't make a decision to do right, to do better, to want more, to get more and don't have haters. You got them on your job now. Go get a promotion. Here come the haters. Go down there and put in for uh, extra overtime. Here come the haters. Because you're just trying to better your position. Do anything. Go change your hair. Here they come. Here they come. But when haters come, haters come, they're a good thing too. They validate you. Haters now prove that you're doing something. You are now validated. If you have no haters, it's because you ain't doing nothing. That's what, I, that's what I learned. If you ain't trying to change and be better, it ain't nothing for them to talk about. Because if you're going to stay the same, then they cool with you because you're right there with them. Haters validate you, and they're going to come at an angle you ain't ready for. Me and my wife been dealing with something, and when you get a hater that come from an angle that you don't know how to handle it, you don't want to, that's when you got to be still. But see, then there's a scripture that says something, uh, there it is. See, now this, this one, I'm going to be honest with you, lead it up. I just learned this one. Something, this is the part of my life where I, I had to learn this one. Yeah. The part that I learned was I didn't, I don't really, the form in Israel, all that, that, okay, just go down to, go down to two. <laughs> when you're getting hated on and you're in a place where it's hurting you and it's cutting you up bad, you will pass through the waters yeah. and I'll be with you. Yeah. If you go through the river, <laughs> you understand? He ain't going to let it drown you, overtake you. And if you walk through the fire, you ain't going to get burned. Nor will you get set ablaze. But here is the part you got to keep in mind. It did not say that it wasn't going to get real hot in the room. Didn't say you wasn't going to get real uncomfortable. You wasn't going to need a whole lot of water. It was, it's going it, to... You, it, <laughs> You ain't got to get burned for heat to be unnecessary. Sometimes it's just been out there so long and it's just hot. You just, you don't feel like it no more. I was sick of getting talked about. Sick of it. But it just kept on. But what I learned was that Bible verse right there. Because Bishop, uh, Bishop uh, Kenneth Olmer sent it to me. In the middle of all my stuff when my wife was just crying. He said, look man. It's going to be, a, you're going to get through it. going to be a tight squeeze, though. But you can walk through the water and he'll be with you. You can come through the river and you won't get overturned. You're going to walk through the fire and you won't get burned and you won't get set ablaze. I learned that. So when you start preparing to move and to change, you got to understand that part coming with it. It's the haters. I'm going to move on because I got to, there's a time limit and there's a couple of things I want to do. So I'm trying to get the right one for you. Okay, this one right here. This is the other one I learned because Bishop Jakes taught me this one. Now, when you're going through something, Steve, and tell the people this on the radio, in order to go to the next level, to the next dimension, you have to break through the glass ceiling. But in breaking through a glass ceiling, there's going to be some bloodshed. <laughs> this this is part I really did not like. It was the bloodshed part. And the blood that you're shedding is usually something from your past. Yeah. Yeah. Because in order to move on, move up, you always got to get rid of you always got to get rid of something from your past. The blood you shed is something from your past cuz everybody got something in their past they don't want out. Yeah. 
Well, once it get out, it's out. They can't tell it on you but one time. That's the fire part. That's, that's, that's when you feel, feel like you're on fire when they're telling it. And you just bleed and you don't know what's you, you got so many holes on you, you can't stop it. But you ain't catching on fire though. You ain't, he ain't gonna put more on you than you can bear. You ain't gonna die. You gonna be fine. But guess what? If you stay still, let me do it for you. Fight your battles. Remember that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. If you can hold that, let me do it for you. When I crash you through this ceiling, you ain't gonna believe you, man. Bishop told me one time, he said, oh, man. All right, Steve. He said, oh, it's like putting a bow and arrow on a bow. He said, you got to pull it back. He said, sometimes he pull you back so far, everything in you be shaking. Sometimes you got it back so far, man, you can't. Man, you, you just, man, please. I can't take it no more. Everything on you is trembling. He said, and you, you feel like you about to break. But he let you go, though. Everybody in your way got it clear. You got to look out. Because he going to shoot you. You going to go places you ain't never thought you'd go. Fire you out there like that, man. And last thing I'm going to tell you is this hill. See, I now learned this from uh, Joel Osteen. That, that's my man. He be texting me. That's my man. This, God done put some people around me. Show me some stuff. He was telling this story. He said, uh, this man that went to heaven, he was walking with Peter uh, down this aisleway, and it had, was going down this corridor, had a lot of doors on it, and said all these doors had names on it. And he said, uh, Peter, let me ask you something. What's, what's, uh, what's all these doors with these names on? He said, don't worry about it. Just go ahead. So he kept walking. He messed around. He saw one of them doors and had his name on it. He said, whoa. He said, hey, Peter, this here ain't got my name on it. Something I need to know. He said, man, don't worry about that. You, you here now. Just go on in there and talk to him. See what he did. He said, no, nah, I won't know what's in the door. He said, you sure you won't see what's in the door? He said, yeah. So he opened up the door. It was a warehouse. It had number shelves on it. And then the shelves had nothing but packages. And all the packages had his name on them. And he said, what is all these boxes? He said, that's all of the blessings. All of the things God wanted to ship to you. But number one, you didn't ask him for it. Then number two, you didn't believe you would have it. Then you, you doubted him. And then you, you felt like you wasn't worthy. And so now all these boxes is up here. Now the man standing there wishing he had never even been in the room. And I started thinking. Now I got some dudes that work for me. And I said, I want you to do this graph for me. And that's what I'm finna show you now. See, what you have is, when God sends your package, he only sends it to one street. That's Faith Street. You got to stay in faith. You can't move off of Faith Street. You can't get on Doubted Drive. You can't be over there and start doubting it because your package gonna go right on by. You can't lose your faith and get on not meant to be way because your package is going to keep going right on by. Because the package just go to Faith Street. You can get your little feelings hurt. I ain't worthy. Guess what? Your package going to keep going right on by. You have not because you ask not. Then you sit up here and start feeling sorry for yourself. You go over on pity way. Your package keep going right on by. If you stay right on Faith Street. Don't ever come off because the blessing is coming. If you wait on it, here it comes. It may not come when you want it, but it's on time. But if you get up and you move off of Faith Street, your box going to get sent back to Cinder. And now you're going to have a warehouse with a bunch of boxes with your name on it that you didn't never get. And I don't know about you, but I want everything he got for me. If he got something for me, I need all of mine. 
Because I don't know about you, but God lay you out, man. God will give you stuff. Man, he done took me places. I ain't never thought I was going to go. I done seen parts of the world I never even thought I could go to. He done gave me stuff. He done put people in my life. God will do it for you, man. But you just got to stay, man. Use these principles of success. Understand, God is just that way. He'll lay you out. Because if he can lay me out, see, if he fix me, and change me and get me over here trying to do better. I ain't perfect. I'm just trying to do better. I still say some stuff I ain't supposed to say. You understand? I ain't, I ain't got it all together yet. I just got in the gate. I'm a new kind of Christian. But ain't no lock on my gate either. So if, if you see, once you, once you check me, I'm probably going to check you back. But I'm getting better at that. I don't know how to love my enemies yet. I'm getting better at it, though. But it's a process. And the more times we can make people understand that it's a process, the more people can come in. And y'all people that have been good to me, that have been praying for me. I mean, man, my mama. If she could see me now. I just wish my mama could see me. Because she's been praying for this hill all her life. Watch my son. Well, he done watch me, mama. And I'm cool now. And my philosophy is very simple. I was who I was. But I am who I am. And I'm cool with both them people. Because who I was wasn't that bad a cap. I made some mistakes. But, I, but I've been changed a little bit. And it's still a process. And the more people that you invite into the process, the better this is. Because ain't nobody perfect no how. So I really appreciate y'all, man, hearing me and listening to me. I'm going to ask Kirk Franklin if he will come out and do a, a benediction or something. And thank you, man. Thank you.